Iron Thorns is a completely cosmetic Pokemon, and it seems to have failed at that because I don't see anyone caring about this thing. But there is no reason to use Iron Thorns in a Pokemon battle when Tyranitar exists. So let's break down why. For starters, it has less stats. It's a 570 base stat total Pokemon compared to the 600 of a pseudo legendary. Now it is a bit more optimized, like okay, 95 special attack, I've never believed in special Tyranitar even though it does technically exist, so cutting it away from the special attack means yeah you're effectively getting the same stats, and it does have the same stats, but slightly less special defense, and then a bit more speed. Seems better. The problem is Tyranitar has Sandstream, and it's one of the very few ways of getting instant sand into the game. This gives Tyranitar and Rock-type Pokemon the benefit of 50% bonus special defense, as well as a couple other nice things, like it can break Sash on some opposing Pokemon, or you can combo it into abilities, which can be really strong. Iron Thorns doesn't have that. Quark Drive on a non-sweeping bulk Pokemon feels kind of weird, and with the stat distribution, Cool, you can just get 30% attack on a Pokemon that's not outspeeding everything when there's better Paradox Pokemon or just better other Pokemon to turn into a sweeper. That's a weird thing about Paradox Pokemon. You look at their stats and go, okay, that should just not be allowed under any circumstance in Pokemon, but then when the Pokemon effectively doesn't have an ability or has to telegraph its ability or becomes like very one-dimensional in how the strategy plays out, turns out it's not that insane. So yeah, you can do things here, but it's not as good as Sandstream, so why make Iron Thorns? The item options for this Pokemon also become kind of messy. Do you Citrus Berry? That way you can get Dragon Dance a bit more reliably. Do you go for the booster energy anyways? That way you can turn on a lot of damage sooner and then go into some wall breaking. Uh, you look at the 72 speed and you think, well, it Dragon Dances better than Tyranitar, but it kind of doesn't because Tyranitar getting that extra special defense as well as the sand benefits it can still just get two Dragon Dances, and it can also run the Citrus Berry and find those two Dragon Dances pretty reliably, and now it's just kind of outspeeding everything. Um, as for this, the 113, 114 speed investments, kind of like that weird sweet spot I've been talking about, because the Battle Stadium is weird. So it's like, alright, you get one Dragon Dance on this Iron Thorns, max out the attack, try to get that extra bit of durability. This is also possible, but if we're looking at the 114, it gives us some weird interactions because Iron Moth, this thing isn't always going timid. Like, you're not seeing 110 Pokemon invest into speed anymore. They're just trying to do as much damage as possible. So, you outspeed with the 114 on a plus one, but you don't outspeed the timid. So then maybe that's when you just, yeah, fine, go all in, whatever, have fun. Maxing out 72 speed on Adamant Nature lets you outspeed 115 speed Pokemon. It's not really a tier in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, but... Maybe some weird stuff comes into play. I don't know, like 70 base speed Pokemon that find a plus one for some reason. At least you get to outspeed those. And then just your coverage. So Thunder Punch, Rock Slide. It goes into your stab, but it's also not crazy high base power, especially on the plus one. Like this could fail some damage rolls into like tanky Pokemon, unless it's the most physically frail thing ever. Uh, yeah, and then you're getting stab. Problem, Rock Electric. Four times weakness to ground, and we do have a four times weakness to fighting with Tyranitar, but that isn't as common or bad for Tyranitar as the just instantly dying to any kind of ground type move is for the Iron Thorns. So that's a thing you're pretty much going to have to Terra off into some kind of other typing. Maybe Rock for the stab, maybe Electric. Electric's good, just only having the weakness to ground, getting that extra damage to make up for the Thunder Punch. Fine. Earthquake is a thing. Maybe you go ground and then stab Earthquake, and now you actually just kind of turn into a Dragon Dancing Garchomp-ish kind of thing. But like I said, there's better Pokemon to do this with, so the identity of Iron Thorns doesn't make any sense. And then you effectively just have Tyranitar's moveset with a little bit of Electric splashed in, but even then you can still go Thunder Punch on the Tyranitar, and I don't think anyone's been like, Yo, Tyranitar needs Electric because the game's so wild. Nah, that's not how it works. Also, I was looking at some interesting things like the Iron Defense on Iron Thorns, but Tyranitar gets Iron Defense. I don't think that's ever been used. However, I think the game is so ugly now, that might be an interesting consideration, especially because you're boosting in sand and maybe there's some weird stuff there. Or maybe just don't do any of that nonsense and, again, run Tyranitar as the Dragon Dancer and have, like, some kind of sand shenanigans. And as we've seen on the channel, Tyranitar is incredible just as a bulky attacker with the assault vest max out hit points max out attack can endure physical hits pretty well 
and then special defense with sand and assault vest means like you're just tanking hydro pumps and you're a three hit KO. And what I've learned about Tyranitar is that it's the best Pokemon for enabling sand rush for the Houndstone. And we've got the videos and sweeps to prove it that the 3v3 Battle Stadium Revival Blessing Houndstone team is the best Pokemon team ever in all of Pokemon. I consider it to be the only team in Pokemon that can have a truly 100% win rate if played perfectly. Like, there is always a line. There is always a path to victory. And it can require, like, an insane amount of outplaying or, like, predicting of your opponent. But if you predict your opponent correctly and you draw the path between, like, setting up Tyranitar, using the correct moves, chipping here and there, going into Revival Blessing at the same time, the team cannot lose. If you lose with the Houndstone team, it's because you misplayed at some point. And maybe 100% is an exaggeration. 98%. Like, it is the highest win rate team possible in Pokemon. I played it with Hippowdon, and Hippowdon's fun. But this Tyranitar is so filthy that you can revive it, and then it can sweep by itself into certain team compositions. Because you have such high natural bulk, then unless you're eating a super effective physical hit, you can be a 3 at KO Pokemon, which means you get revived, and then you can slap something. And the Assault Vest means you have the ability to choose your move, and then this coverage is just going to be great for finding super effective hits and potentially one-hit KOing the opponent, or just making them so, like, softened up that anything else can take them out. And then reviving Sand Assault Vest into a special attacker is just completely outrageous, and it turns out Terra Bug, like I predicted months ago in my What is the Best Terra Type video, is actually one of the best Terra Types on certain, like, bulky attacker Pokemon, especially something like Tyranitar, that you're going to eat a Earthquake super effective, you're going to eat a Fighting super effective, and then it just becomes resisted with the bug, and the opponent does no damage. The downside is, being a Bug-type Pokemon, you now don't have the benefits of a Rock-type into Sandstream, but then the Assault Vest kind of fills that in anyways if it was about to get, like, too insane. And if you get KO'd and revived, you lose the Terrastalization, so then you just come back as a Tyranitar. And Tyranitar's really good, especially in this meta. So that was kind of like another thing. Okay, Tyranitar's the best Pokemon for enabling the Houndstone, but it's also just a great fit that you just put Tyranitar in and you're fine. And if you tear the Tyranitar, then its weaknesses aren't a problem. So you can have another rock type Pokemon. Or if you go like Sandstream setup, just have Tyranitar run it down. And then you kind of set up to put your Garganasalt in a good position. Then your Garganasalt is fine. And if it gets too threatened, you can just Terra off. Or when the sand runs out, then you can Terra your Garganasalt into something like flying. And you just had pure benefit. And now you're impossible to deal with. So, going back to the existential crisis that I've had throughout all of Generation 9 competitive Pokemon just being so ugly, it's opened up a lot of different pathways and understandings of Pokemon that rewrite almost the history of competitive Pokemon before it because everything is so broken. It's being enabled through weird stuff like the Paradox Pokemon, where, okay, you would think that some of the Paradox Pokemon just, like, win, and then you realize, oh, that's not it, and we're in a tank meta, and now an Oko meta has developed, and now all of these other strategies aren't working, and somehow a Pokemon from Generation 2 is holding its own, potentially sweeping, or is just, like, the utility answer, and it might have actually just been the utility answer for certain metas or certain team compositions in previous generations but got overlooked. Yes, people used Tyranitar a lot more when there was less power creep in the game, but maybe there were like different angles that weren't being approached on older Pokemon or older strategies that now are working in the nonsense of Generation 9, but maybe have always worked. So yeah, there's your how to use guide for Iron Thorns. Don't. And I, I kind of like hate that cliche because, you know, we've reviewed every Pokemon competitively on this channel or like most of them. I think I still forgot about Obstagoon because Generation 8 Pokemon got so ugly competitive and like a few others. And I think we still have like two more Paradox Pokemon to do to kind of finish out Generation 9. But then Pokemon Home is going to update and then I have to do the Hisuian Pokemon that I hate. So we're going to see how that develops. But, you know, the, the obvious meme is how do you use this Pokemon that is just not competitive at all? Don't. And it just feels wrong on a gimmick from a modern Pokemon game where, like, competitive has a better understanding that it's just not viable.
and then the thing it's based off of is just way better and has somehow improved into Generation 9. But at least we got some talk about there, and hopefully you just get better at Pokemon. That's why you like, comment, share, subscribe, increase your Pokemon brain power through my content, because I actually have the best breakdowns and competitive understanding of all YouTubers when it comes to Pokemon, and then things get pretty interesting. So if you guys enjoy the video, hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.